Good afternoon everyone, Country Flyboy here, and today, cruise. Alright, so we got the uh, autopilot climbing the Milvis 310 up to uh, cruise level. We're going to be cruising at 12,500 today. Uh, and the autopilot is climbing us up to 12,500. Throttle is full, manifold pressure is slowly decreasing as we climb. Uh, we can still maintain top of the wide arc speed at 500 feet per minute right now. But it is slowly decreasing. RPM is set for 20, uh, just shy of 25. And uh, I've been bringing the mixture out as we go. So, what we're going to talk about today is normal cruise. We'll touch on single engine cruise, but we probably won't demo it. And we'll also talk about finding the fuel mixture, or what you're supposed to. So real quick, I just want to get a look around, because I'm pretty sure we're getting close to Alma. Yep, right there is Alma over there. Can I identify that airport? Alright. So, again, I wanted to state that uh, climb speed is 115 to 140 knots in this aircraft. So, 115 to top of the wide arc. So, as you see, we're dropped below top of the wide arc now. And there's no way we can maintain top of the wide arc anymore. Unless we severely decrease our climb rate. Now, this airplane could probably maintain 500 feet per minute up to about 12,000 feet above 115 knots. About 12,000 feet, you really do have to start lowering that climb rate to maintain the climb speed. You never want to get below 115 knots during cruise climb. So it's at this point you would start informing ATC that you won't be able to maintain 500 feet per minute anymore. Uh, this plane, again, can get up to the 20,000s, but yeah, around 10,000, 9,000, it's where it really starts struggling to climb. So it can take a while to get up to the 20,000s, but nonetheless, it can get up there. Alright, so we'll pick the camera back up once we actually level off at cruise. Alright, coming up on 12,500, our chosen cruise altitude. So, once the autopilot levels the plane off, I'm going to let the autopilot do most of the flying in this video. Now, the plane's leveling off now. We're going to leave the throttle and RPM setting alone to let the plane speed up. Especially once you get above 10,000, you may have to let... Don't immediately reduce throttle and RPM to cruise setting. Let the plane speed up. Now, what... What is cruise setting? Well, they're whatever you want it to be. If you look at the tables in the back of the POH that comes with the plane, you'd see that there is a wide variety of cruise throttle and RPM settings you can have. You'd want to set it to whatever one you picked for your flight planning. Now, I typically go with, I prefer airspeed over most other things. Uh, true airspeed, so I typically go with higher stuff. Uh, especially in flight sim when you don't have to worry about fuel because, uh, well, obviously we don't have to pay for fuel. Now, in real life, if you were paying for fuel, yeah, it might behove you to, to uh, lean that mixture out a little bit more, decrease the throttle setting. It might take you longer to get to your destination, but you'll have a better fuel burn. So, looks like the airspeed has sort of topped off. Now, above, again, above um, around... Above around 6,000 feet, you pretty much aren't going to touch the throttle anymore. So our main control for cruise at this point is the RPM, which I'm going to bring back a little bit to 24. So you can see our throttle, I'm just going to leave full open, full throttle, because, well, it's not, it's well, it's, it's well into the green arc. It's about 19 on the manifold. Alright, so now we are cruising, and we are making about 150 knots indicated, which if we look at the GPS, it's giving us a ground speed of 178 knots. Now, I've set the winds to be calm, so that's also our true airspeed. We're getting about 178 knots. And we got one other thing to worry about, and that is mixture. I want to turn your attention to um, these gauges right here. Now, these, the EDM 700 right here, these are very nice because they let you see what's going on with the engines. So let's go over reading these. They show both exhaust gas and cylinder head temperature. 
So this bar graph here is showing the temperature of each cylinder and the one on the far right here, that's the average. So the big one is the average. We have six cylinders in each engine, yada, yada, yada. So there's two buttons, one here and one here. This one will let you pick which cylinder you want to show. So this is the number right here that will show EGT and CHT for your currently selected cylinder. I currently have in cylinder number two of the left engine selected. Pushing this button will scroll to cylinder three, cylinder four, cylinder five, cylinder six, and then there should be a T there, but it's not showing up. That there's the average. So when it's over here, that dot is there, that's the average. So the average amongst all six cylinders on the left engine is EGT of 956 and CHT of 277. What is this second button here? Oh, by the way, this red bar, which for some reason is not showing up on the left engine, I don't know why, but this red bar here is the, um, the cylinder head temperature. Give you an idea of where it's at. For some reason, let me check my gauges real quick. The left engine is running a whole lot cooler. Oh, that's why. That's why is because I had my cow flap on the right engine closed from the climb video. I forgot to reset that. Okay. Now that that's open, we see this number is dropping. So for cruise, let's run through the cruise checklist real quick before we start playing with that. So cruise power, 2100 to 2500 RPM. I got 2400 selected. Mixture lean for desired cruise fuel flow. We will do that in a second, so omit that for now. Cow flaps, full open as required. I actually like to bring them out just a little bit. That's full close. One turn on the mouse wheel. Two clicks there. One, two, one, two. Just to close them a little bit. Again, it doesn't really matter because the internal cow flaps on this aircraft. But uh, it, it, the engine does run better if it's a little bit warm. So I do like to close them a little bit. Propeller synchronizer manual. We don't have prop sync on this aircraft, so we have to do it manually anyway. But just make sure you're getting about pretty close to the same RPM reading on each air, each prop. Quadrant friction lock, Titan, that's not simulated in flight sim. Auxiliary fuel pumps, main tanks off or low as required. We are at 12,000, that's 500, that's above 12,000. So we're going to switch these on to low. They have to be on when above 12,000. Switching tanks, low, and cross-feeding, low. So if we're switching fuel tanks, we need to be on low. Fuel selector, left engine, left main, right engine, right main. That's pretty much where it's going to be at all times unless you need to select the auxiliary tank or for whatever reason need to select the other tank from the engine. We can go over a little bit on swapping tanks out, but usually you're just going to have to have them on their, their primary tank. Trim tabs adjusted, and that is the cruise checklist. So, real quick, let's go over finding the proper mixture. So this thing has an automatic peak EGT finding thing. It will zero in on the peak EGT automatically. So to do that, we need to push the little button on the right for each engine. Now, it's automatically going to select engine number five, because in FSX, there's a bit of a... It's not really a bug, but it's just something about the FSX code. The fifth cylinder, and any cylinder that has five or more, any engine with five or more cylinders, it's gonna, the fifth cylinder is always gonna be the hottest. I don't know why, but just for whatever reason, FSX always makes the fifth cylinder the hottest cylinder. So it's always gonna auto select the fifth cylinder. Now we're gonna bring the fuel mixture out slowly. I'm gonna use my keyboard. And we're going to see those bar graphs rising. We're looking for a decrease in EGT, by the way. So every click on my keyboard is still going up. It's leveling off. Alright, the bars have started dropping. It looks like it's zeroed in on 1019. I'm going to increase the thick fuel mixture a bit to get them bars 
back up, and I'm going to keep increasing it till I see the bars drop again. Okay, they are dropping. So, somewhere between 7 and 8 is where peak is. So, I'm going to bring it out to right there. Oop, that's too much. Right there. So basically, bring it out until you see EGT level off. Do not go below the number 8. Below the number 8, you're essentially in the cutoff setting. So, yeah, do not go below that. Uh, bring it out until you either see EGT level off, or you see the bars drop severely. There should The bars should constantly be going up. So real quick, we'll, we'll redo that again. I'll set it back to 5, which was where it was. So I'm going to bring fuel mixture out until I see the bars stop increasing. Or until I get to number 8 on the setting here, whichever happens first. So I'm bringing it out one click at a time. Bars are increasing. Bars are increasing. Still increasing. Okay. Yep, they're decreasing there. Yep, definitely. Now I'm going to increase until I see a decrease again. Increase. Bars are still getting bigger. There, they're decreasing. So my my... My, uh, my peak is right around the 7 mark right here. Right there. And that we have just found peak fuel flow. The best peak um, peak EGT. The best um, the best setting for cruise which will give us the most fuel burn to uh, engine performance ratio. And if we look over at our fuel flow you can see we are getting, we're in the green, this inner arc here. This is a, a fuel flow gauge, has this inner arc right here. So you can see it has white for takeoff, blue is for climb. So whenever you're climbing, your fuel flow should be in the blue. And for cruise, it should be in the green. Now this is in um, pounds per hour. So that's five pounds per hour. That's 50 pounds per hour, 100 pounds per hour. 60, 70, 75. We're getting about 75 pounds per hour. Now, real quick, I'm going to compare that. I have my iPad here. I'm going to compare that to the tables. So I'm going to go back to the performance section. Cruise performance with recommended lean mixture. All right, the charts for this aircraft as far as cruise performance go up to 10,000 with instructions on how to increase them. But... um. We're at standard atmosphere today. I set the weather for standard atmosphere. I'm just going to use the 10,000 feet numbers to make my life easier. Although we should be seeing better than what the chart says. Because we're up at 12,500. Alright, so for RPM at 24. With about 18.5. So 18.5, 2400. Standard temperature... We should be seeing a a base horsepower of 52.5, true airspeed of 166, and a total fuel burn of 13.6, or sorry, 136 pounds per hour. Our true airspeed is 176 knots, although the GPS reads in ground speed. Actually, I can figure out our true airspeed, don't I? Speed. I got my whiz wheel here. I'm not going to worry with it. Ground speed is the same as true airspeed when there's no wind. And there's no wind today, so 176 knots is our ground speed. That's also our true airspeed. So... A little bit better that's 10 knots faster than what the chart called for even though we are about let's see we're about 1500 feet higher than what these numbers are for though 136 knots we're at 176 or wait, 166 knots we're at 176 and the fuel flow should be 136 pounds per hour and we are at 60 or wait 70 about 70 pounds per hour that's because we leaned out really far now you may also want to watch your EGT and your temperatures when you lean out a bit far. You don't want to see them get too high. Alright. Now I just want to talk about single engine cruise real quick. 
I'm not going to demo the single engine cruise, mostly because it's very similar to single engine climb. And, this, and since you noticed during the climb video, when we did the single engine climb, you weren't climbing very much. The main purpose of single engine cruise is to just keep the plane coordinated and keep it on speed uh, around 20 on the manifold pressure and 25 RPM should be your setting for a single engine set operations except for takeoff and landing. Uh, single engine cruise is really just to keep you alive long enough to find a field to land on. Uh, once the engine fails you really want to land as soon as practical. Uh, I say as soon as practical not as soon as possible because the airplane is still perfectly controllable with a single engine albeit a lot harder to control. So single engine cruise is 2,100 RPM, or yeah, 2,500 RPM and 20 inches of manifold pressure. Uh, usually, you may have to play with it a bit depending on weather and altitude and whatnot. But it should be somewhere around there, and it sh your aircraft should be perfectly controllable and maintaining a speed of around 130 to 115 knots. Anything above blue line is good. Okay, so you don't need to make worry about maintaining an exact speed as long as it's above blue line. All right, that will cover it for the cruise video. Next, we'll talk descents. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.